Hi, I'm Dr. Lisa Palmer, and I have tips for you on troubleshooting detoxification with your patients. So why would a patient want to do detoxification? I think a lot of patients think of detox as sitting, spending hours and hours sitting on the throne, um, feeling badly, um, vomiting, that kind of thing. They think of like a detox reaction. So you have to educate your patients on why detoxification would be a good thing. Um, you know, we get exposed to chemicals in the air we breathe. We get exposed to chemicals in the food that we eat. You know, I unfortunately I had a patient or fortunately had a patient who worked in the organic fertilizer field. And um, she educated me because I used to think that organic meant no pesticides, no insecticides, no herbicides, nothing, no chemicals. Well, that definition is not true. Organic just means less chemicals. So you have your, you know, say you go to one of the health food, big health food stores and they have what's called conventional and then they have organic. Conventional means that it was raised with conventional means. So they were sprayed with herbicides, they were sprayed with insecticides, they were sprayed with fertilizers, they had chemicals in the, in the farming industry were utilized with conventional produce. Well, organic Chemicals were also used. It just means that they had less. And each state has different criteria for what organic is. California has certain standards on what they consider organic. And here in Florida, we have standards on what is considered organic. If you look at the label of your organic, say, avocado, and it says it's organic from Mexico, that has a different standard of what organic means. And then you might also see like a country like Colombia that also has different standards of what organic, how organic is defined. I was talking to my daughter the other day and she was saying, mommy, is that organic? And I was telling her, well, that, that is the, the food that she was looking at was not organic. And I go, when mommy was a little girl, there is no organic food. And she's like, wow. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that sounds like a really old story, but it was true. There was no designation on organic. So your farmers in your area that are growing organic, you're probably going to have the least amount of chemicals. And then if you're shopping at a health food store, um, organic, just know that there are chemicals on it. My whole point is we need to do detoxes because there's chemicals in the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. City water in uh, Florida, they do what's called chemical burns. And what a chemical burn is, is the, the water plant decides that they're gonna release more chlorine or they're gonna release more fluoride or they're gonna release more of a, a certain chemical. It's very interesting in that when they do that, a lot of my patients that live in certain areas will all come in with extra chlorine or they'll all come in with extra fluoride or they'll all come in with this weird, weird chemical that we, we recognize. Um, in nutrition response system, we actually have a chemical test kit and it has homeopathic preparations or vials that we can test for chlorine, we can test for fluoride, we can test for acetates, we can test for various different chemicals and let the patient know, hey, this is what we're finding. And then we can look at their life and see where it might be coming from. Bottom line, there's chemicals everywhere. I recommend to patients, they should at least do one detox per year, preferably two detoxes per year. Why would you have a patient do this? Well, you have to educate them on why this would be beneficial to them. Well, we know less toxins in the brain causes clearer thinking, better memory, better sleeping, better energy. Um, maybe your patient has a little bit of extra weight, so it can help with weight loss, get toxic toxicities out of organs, out of the brain. Um, the nice thing is that when we're doing uh, nutritional testing with patients, if the person's toxic, we, under, we can see that they're going to accumulate extra supplements. Typically, after a detoxification program, that we'll be discussing in a little bit, the patient will need less supplements because their body's cleaner, it's healthier, it's operating better. And then um, you maybe they've done a detox in the past on their own. So they went to the health food store and they're like, well, I think a detox is good. Um, maybe for Easter, they wanted to do, you know, give up something for Lent, so they decided to do a detox, and they really had a rough time. So uh, with your expertise, especially these tips I'm going to give you on detoxification, you can help your patients successfully do a detox. Well, with that being said, when would it be bad for a patient to do a detox? You definitely don't want patients to do detoxes when they're stressed. Why? 
A detox allows the body to cleanse the liver and cleanse the kidney, the lungs, the brain. And what's happening, it's releasing those toxins into the bloodstream. Is that easy on a patient or is that hard on a patient? Yeah, it's more of a challenge. So if your patient is already stressed out emotionally and now you're adding on physical stress, they may end up having difficulty with that and they may even get sick. So if a patient has a lot of deadlines or they're traveling or those kinds of things, it is not a good time to do a detox. Uh, if the patient already is sick or has a cold, so if there are they are exhibiting symptoms, we don't want them, we don't want to add a detox on top of the cold. That would just make it even more challenging for the body to heal. Now, yes, if your patient is getting frequent colds and viruses and that kind of thing, they should do a detox. But if they're actively sick, they're sneezing, they're coughing, they're running down, that's not a good time to do a detox. During the holidays or on vacation, I have a lot of patients around Christmas time or winter holidays, and they're like, well, I want to do a detox. I'm like, okay, good. So we're going to get this done before the holidays, right? And a lot of times they, they would like to do that, um, but then realize that, that the excitement for the holidays and holiday parties is just not a good time to do the detox. A really good time is when a lot of people choose to do a detox is in January. So they've been kind of bad, if you will. You know, October, Halloween, they started eating more candy, and then you had Thanksgiving, and they had cookies and pies, and then over the winter Christmas holidays, and they had even more treats. And then by January, they're like, oh, yeah, I, I've been eating some bad foods, and now's a perfect time for doing a detox. So we always do a detox program with the office um, in January. Another really good time is spring. So spring cleaning is a great time to do a office detox. So those are great times to do them, but holidays, not a good time, or if the patient's planning on being out of town. So a detox typically can last a couple weeks. It can last a month or longer, depending on the program that you run with them. If you know that they're going to be out of town, if you know that they're going to be on holiday or vacation, not a good time to start. One, you can't manage them properly. And two, they're probably not going to eat ideally or get enough sleep. So holidays, vacation time, not a good time. Pregnancy seems super obvious. Um, during pregnancy is not a good time to detox. Uh, the toxins can be released and absorbed by the baby, so not a good time to detox when you're pregnant. Breastfeeding for same reasons, so toxins will and a detox will get um, released, and the breasts are made out of fat tissue, so the, those toxins can be stored in breast tissue. So it is not a good time to detox. It is not recommended to detox during pregnancy. It is not a good time to detox during uh, breastfeeding. So bad times, if the patient is sick, if the patient has high stress, if the patient is traveling out of town, if the patient is pregnant, or if the patient is breastfeeding, not optimum times to do detox. Where do you start with a patient for a detox? Like, what would you do on that visit? What would you, how would you prepare a patient for a detox? Well, um, I don't start brand new patients on detoxes. Why? Because a brand new patient typically is not eating so well. When my husband and I were dating, he saw that I was doing a detox and he thought, oh, well, that would be awesome. I'll do a detox with you. But at the time, and he'll tell you this uh, story himself, he was eating uh, Dunkin' Donuts, maple donuts for breakfast. He was eating uh, Wendy's for lunch and Chick-fil-A for dinner. So he wasn't the most healthy person um, when I first met him. And he decided to go from eating fast food and junk food to eating clean, which is what you want to do in a detox. But if you're way over here and you're trying to eat over here, how do you think he felt? He felt so bad because he was detoxifying all the toxins in fast food, processed food, sugar, chemicals, all those things. So a brand new patient, you want to make sure that they're eating healthy and you're working with them on processed foods and fast foods. Uh, soda, sugar, all those things. And when they're at a good point is a great time to detox them. If you take a brand new patient and their eating habits are pretty poor, they're not going to feel well and they may actually quit the detox. How do you know what they're eating? You can have them do it old school and just have them write it down on paper so they can write down their breakfast, their lunch, their dinners, their snacks. It'd also be important to know their bowel movements, how many and the consistency their hours of sleep, and their quality of sleep. So if you can track all those things, that would be a good thing. 
If they're eating pretty poorly, I would get them eating better. What would I work on first? Well, um, if the patient drinks a lot of diet soda, I might start with the diet soda. So say they're having three diet Cokes a day, that's 21 a week. I would just reduce that a little bit. So instead of 21, I would do 19. I wouldn't go from 21 to zero. Why? Because they would actually detox out uh, Diet Coke from their system, which would leave them with headaches, irritability, jitteriness, fatigue, all those things just from making that much of a change with their Diet Coke. Um, so just start to taper down the Diet Coke or taper down the sugar, taper down the fast food. You can taper down the processed food. Um, right now I have a patient, she eats a lot of fast food. So I'm having her record what she eats and then I'm having her circle when she has fast food. I told her if it comes out a window, it's considered fast food and it's not really food. So when I first met her, she was having fast food two times a day. Now we have her um, decreased down to fast food four times a week. So she's doing much better. Is she ready for a detox? No, I don't think so yet. So that's how you can gradually do this with patients and they're not gonna have horrible detox reactions. How do you know which detox to start with? So Systemic Formulas has the true cellular detox programs. They have prep phase, body phase, brain phase, and cellular vitality. What we do is, since we do muscle testing, is say we'll take brain phase, we'll actually place the whole box of brain phase on the patient's body, and we test. If it tests strong and it goes through some other testing points, like they can digest the product, they're not allergic to the product, then we'll, we'll start them on brain phase. Not everybody needs to start with prep phase. So some people that have already been working with you from a nutritional standpoint, their liver has been already detoxed, their kidneys have been detoxed, they're doing well, they may not need to start with prep phase. Um, they might start with brain phase and they might start with body phase. So how do you know which one to start with? You can actually put the box on the patient and test. If they test strong for it, that is their detox. Um, so that's one way to know. The other way you can pull the supplements. So if you have a systemic formulas uh, test kit, you can pull the different pieces of the test kit. So for example, if you didn't have the brain phase uh, box in stock, you could pull all these different things from your test kit and test them. So. You know, brain phases, MORS, MIN, G-cell, brain DTX, and BIND. You would pull those out of your test kit. Um, brain DTX is probably not in your test kit. But you could test these things and see if brain phase would be right for them. Brain phase is awesome. Okay, so you select the box. You select the detox that muscles test the best for them. And, or if you don't do muscle testing, you just start everybody on prep phase. I mean, prep phase has so many good things to preparate, to preparate, that's not a word, to prepare a patient for detox. So let's talk about what's in prep phase. I'll get prep phase out. And I love that systemic formulas made these so easy for patients. They have the little, you remove this tab and then it has the morning packets, the afternoon packets in here, and then all the goodies that's inside. So prep phase has the supplement energy. It helps with energy production. MORS, which helps with methylation, okay, with your, with your energy pathways. VISTA-1, which is nutrients for the cell membrane. VISTA-2, which are your good fats. In order to get rid of bad fat, you have to supply the body with good fat. Uh, K-kidney. A lot of people, their kidneys are backed up. And you remember the little kidney tubules? So the kidney uh, gets clogged up. So K-kidney keeps the kidney pathway open. L liver, because L liver, your liver is detoxifying toxins. So if the liver gets clogged up, then you can't detox properly. So L liver. And then NBC for building the gut. Like it's super amazing. So they just take their packets. They take a packet in the morning and a packet in the afternoon. Super easy, great for patient compliance. They don't have to buy one, two, three, four, five, six. They don't have to buy seven bottles of a product. They just have this neat little box. Okay. So that's prep phase, very easy to do, great. If, if you muscle test, you can muscle test them on prep phase. If you don't muscle test, you can start your patient with prep phase. Another great detox, which I'm looking forward to doing soon myself, is brain phase. Brain phase has four packets. You have your morning packet. Okay, so again, you rip this tab and inside are little packets with the supplements. You have your morning packet. 
your afternoon packet, and then on the back of the box, you have the brain packet with the brain DTX, and you have your nighttime packet to take at night. The brain DTX um, is specific to this uh, brain detox, and it really helps with memory. It really helps to get the toxins out of the brain. We know that toxins in the brain can lead to dementia, Alzheimer's, neurological issues, problems with memory, cognitive issues, short-term memory loss, long-term memory loss. I mean, and there's so many toxins that can cross the blood-brain barrier. Brain DTX is an amazing product for that. You also have Moore's for methylation, your G-cell product for glutathione, Min for minerals. Now, um, if you don't have good minerals, your body won't let go of bad minerals. So MIN provides the good minerals and electrolytes. And then BIND. BIND's activated carbon, so it's going to absorb all the toxins. What you need to know with your patients was with brain phase, one week they're going to take the brain DTX packet. It's right here. They take it. And then the next week they take everything but the brain packet. So you cycle the brain packet on for a week, and then you stop it for a week. And then you do it on for a week and off for a week. So brain phase, super awesome detox, love brain phase. Body phase. Okay, so this um, salmon color, I guess, I don't know, this pretty pinkish color is body phase. The body phase program has a morning packet, an afternoon packet, and a night packet. It has Vista 1 for mitochondrial and membrane health. Your Morris for methylation again. Energy for energy of the mitochondria, your G cell that has glutathione and vine. So your vine is going to absorb those toxins. Great product. Um, again, really easy for patient compliance. The little packets, the patients love the packets. And then you have the morning, the afternoon, and the night packets. All right, and then the last part of the True Cellular Detox program. Oh no, they're falling down. Is Cellular Vitality. So this is one daily packet. And in cellular vitality, you have the vitamin, the DV3, which is vitamin D, Spectra 1, which is like a multivitamin, but way better than just a multivitamin, G cell, which is the glutathione, Moore's for methylation, and Vista 2 is good fats. So really great um, program that you can put your patient on. When should you start a detoxification program with a patient? I like to tell patients to start their program on the weekend. Why? Because they can get healthy foods, they can kind of regroup everything. So I'll tell them, hey, you should start this on Saturday, or you should start this on Sunday if they're not working on the weekend. If they work on the weekend, then I would have them started on their first day off. You want to make sure, like obvious things, and of course all the detox boxes say this, is to increase fluid intake. If you're detoxifying and you're releasing fluids, and you are, you, if you're detoxifying, you need to increase your fluids because the toxins are going into your system. If you don't have enough fluids, meaning you're dehydrated, you might get a headache, you might feel nauseous, you might have vomiting, that kind of thing. So please make sure, or constipation, make sure your patients are drinking enough fluids. Um, create shopping lists of foods. So you might have in your patient education materials uh, different food recommendations on what they can buy, what they can eat. Your patients should not be hungry on a detoxification program. If they are hungry, they're probably not sure what to eat. So that's where the when you have them write down their food or they use an app like Lose It or MyFitnessPal, you want to make sure they're eating enough food. You don't want them not eating unless you're doing a purposed fast. So maybe you're having the patient fast in the morning or fast in the evening for to help with their case, then that's different. But if it's a straight detoxification where they're still eating food and they're starving, they're not eating enough. And then sleep. So make sure that your patients are getting enough sleep. It's really hard to detox if you're really tired. So a lot of adults are sleep deprived. They are not getting enough sleep. You might have patients that are only sleeping four hours or five hours. So I recommend seven plus hours for adults, more for kids. And then workouts. So if you're doing a heavy detox or you're doing a detox, you don't want to do heavy workouts. Now is not the time to increase your weight as far as your lifting weight or to increase your mileage or to increase the intensity. 
you want to do your typical workout or a little bit less. Okay, because remember, detoxification is like a workout for your body, but it's detoxifying the cells. So heavy, heavy workouts, or uh, if you're in the beginning of a season or in the middle of a season, may not be a great time to do a detoxification program. Tips on the consult before the patient starts the detox. If you've been working with a patient and you feel like detoxification is their next right step, on that consultation, you want to gather some information. Patients love to see numbers. Patients love to see results. So I would recommend taking their height at a new unit of time. So that visit, take their height, take their weight. If you have a bioimpedance machine, you can do their body mass index or you can do their body fat. Uh, take their blood pressure. You can do circumference measurements of their uh, upper arms. You can do their chest, their tummy, their thighs, their behind. You can get these measurements. They love to see changes. Um, you can take before pictures, so that's fun to, to get them to take a before picture. I always joke with patients that I should have like a, a camera in my lobby ceiling, and when they first walk in the office for the first time, it snaps a picture and even some video. Sometimes the patients change so much with just starting systemic formula products that I don't even recognize them. Have you had that happen where you're like, Mrs. Jones, uh, Mrs. Jones, where are you? Uh, have you seen Mrs. Jones? Because I don't see her. And the patient's health has improved so much, the patient visibly looks different. I don't know if that's happened to you guys. I'm sure it has. So before pictures, if you run any kind of additional testing, we run a heart rate variability. You can run that or also known as a health express. Any testing that you can do to get some before numbers is really useful. You can run labs, so you can take their blood sugar, you can run their cholesterol, you can look at any kind of specific testing with labs, and questionnaires. So you want to run, if you're going to do that, you want to run the questionnaire before and the questionnaire after, the lab before and the lab after, the measurements before, the measurements after. So that's what you're going to do. Obviously, you're also going to set the future appointments. I recommend that you're seeing them weekly to track their progress and, and to troubleshoot any difficulties. And we're going to talk about a whole list of troubleshooting for detoxification programs a little bit later. Uh, the follow-up appointments, what are you going to be doing? If you're seeing them weekly, maybe you're doing uh, video consults or they're coming into your actual office, you're going to see them to help troubleshoot. You know, a patient should not feel poorly on a detoxification program. If they do, there are things that you can do to make this process way easier. Because if you don't help them, what's going to happen? They're totally going to, they're going to quit. And then they feel like they failed. They may stop coming in to see you. Um, they just feel they take a loss on it. And we want them to be successful. You're going to have the patient write down their food, write down their water, record how much sleep they're getting, record their bowel movements. You're going to make sure that they're getting enough sleep, so record the number of hours of sleep. Um, you're going to make sure that if they're waking up at certain times, you're going to see if they're waking up at 3 in the morning or 1 in the morning or whenever they're having difficulty sleeping, see what organs correlate with that. Maybe they need some extra K-kidney or L-liver or R-lung to help with the detoxification process. So troubleshooting, say your patient starts the, the brain phase and then they come in and they're like, Doc, I am like super constipated. If they're constipated, there's things that could be done. How much water are they drinking? A lot of people, they just don't drink enough water. Um, maybe you can give them some aloe and that'll help them get things moving. Maybe you can give them extra fiber like FBR. You can add fiber to their, to their shake or their smoothie or their food. Um, perhaps they need some C colon. You can test them on C colon. So you can put the C colon bottle on the body and test if it's strong, they could utilize some C colon. But you have to get that, that bowel open. If, it's, if it, they remain constipated, you need to stop the detox. The detoxification is not going well. Um, they also may be uh, needing more fats. So you can try CBO, cardiovascular oil, one of my favorites. Spectra 2, Vista 2. Maybe they just need some extra coconut oil or MCT oil. Uh, perhaps they can take a fish oil or they just, you know, they need to get more fluids in. Okay, so constipation, if your patient's reporting after starting their detox that they're constipated, you have to handle that for them. Vomiting, oh my goodness. Okay, if you started a patient on a detox program and they begin vomiting, it could be that they're detoxifying too quickly. 
In nutrition response testing, we actually have a way to track the detox. Perhaps we're detoxing aluminum. We can, we can use the test kit, those of you that are trained in it, you can use the test kit to see how much aluminum they have, where the aluminum is located, and then when they start the detox, how those aluminum levels are coming down, and you can get that information in less than a minute. So it's really useful data. If you notice that the detox is going too fast and you're doing nutrition response, so you can stop the detox and then let their body kind of catch up and then begin the detox again. If you're not trained in nutrition response testing and the patient is vomiting, you should still stop the detox and just know maybe they need more bind. So they have too much toxins flying around and then you can increase the bind, stop the detox for a bit. And then when they're doing better and they're visibly feeling better, then you can start the detox again. Headaches, so headaches can turn on. Um, maybe they're, again, they're not drinking enough fluids is very, very common. They have too much toxins flying around, so they need to increase bind, or they're detoxing too fast. You know, they're, if they're detoxing too fast, the headache turns on, um, we can stop the detox for a day and start the next day or for a couple days. Back pain. If your patient's reporting back pain, it might be that their kidneys are getting backed up. Now, if you're doing um, prep phase, they already have K kidney in their pack but they may need more K-kidney, so you can, they can get a bottle of K-kidney and you can add, you can dose to see, maybe they need two K-kidney or three K-kidney or four K-kidney, you can increase that. Um, if they're on brain phase or if they're on body phase or they're doing the cellular vitality, there's no K-kidney. Perhaps you add K-kidney to their detox and then they're, they're, they're doing well, their back pain goes away. They also may have back pain because of their adrenals. Test them on GA. If they test for GA, it means that their adrenals could use a little help and they're going to feel way better and their detox will go better. Uh, perhaps they need more drainage. You can try ACP or ACX. Um, you can add that into the program and that can help with drainage. That can help so the kidneys aren't having to work so hard. If they have diarrhea, again, that might be a sign that they're detoxing too quickly. So they have loose stools. You can uh, increase bind. So you do have bind already in brain phase and you have bind in body phase, but you don't have bind in prep phase. So if you find that the patient is getting diarrhea, you might need to add bind in and they would take it at night away from everything else. Why would they take it at night? Because if, if they take the bind with the other nutrients, bind can actually absorb the nutrients in the, in, in the minerals. So you take bind at nighttime by itself. So increase bind. Tiredness. Tiredness may mean that they're just not eating enough food or they're not drinking enough fluids or they're not getting enough sleep. So if you're detoxing, you're asking your body to actively detox out the organs of detoxification. You're actually, actually asking the body to change. And if you're really tired, maybe you're just not getting enough rest. So check those areas. You can also check for more minerals like min. You can check for 16B. So the 16 B vitamins, amazing product. Um, you can check if they need more mores or glutathione in the form of G cell, or um, perhaps they, they would do well on energy. So those are really great products that you can add in if it's not already in your detox. Muscle cramps. If you've ever done a detox and your calf's cramping on you, I think the worst ever is toe cramps. So your toes cramp and they get all like gnarly and you're grabbing your foot in the middle of the night. That's a sign of dehydration. Um, low minerals or low electrolytes. Min can help you with that. So you can test the patient on min and see if that helps. If you have min at home, just take min. If they have min, um, it might be something that you send home with them with their detoxification. They have min just in case they need extra minerals. Perhaps their potassium levels are altered. PTM, PTM the product, um, has two different types of potassium. So maybe they need more potassium help. Um, sometimes people are not getting enough good minerals. They're not using like a Celtic sea salt or a Himalayan salt. So sea salts could be added to the food and that may also help with muscle cramps. So those are a lot, those are the most common troubleshooting that you can do when you're doing a detoxification program with a patient. Ending the detox. That's the other thing that a lot of times practitioners forget to tell their patients. Um, at the end of the detox, Definitely you want to go ahead and get the, the numbers. So you want to um, get the patient's weight, get the patient's blood pressure, 
do their circumference testing, do whatever kind of labs again. Um, you want to have that data. So the next visit you see them after the detox is done, you could present them with the changes. You might even ask them to get a wind sheet. So a success story where they write up, you know, before my brain phase, I was tired and I had brain fog and all these different things. And then after the detox, I felt this way. And that helps um, congratulate the patient for their wins. It also could be utilized for patients that are looking to do a detoxification program. I find it very helpful for that patient to read the other patient's testimonials. And then they understand why to do the detoxification program and they're hearing it from somebody other than you. But when the patient's ending the detox, um, you want to talk to them about what to eat and what not to eat. If they've been eating more organic and they've been doing the detoxification and just really eating healthy, it is a super bad idea to eat a whole bunch of junk food or drink a whole bunch of alcohol or have some fried McDonald's or fast foods. How are they going to feel? So now they have a body that their liver is detoxified, their kidneys are operating well, um, and they eat poor quality food, their body's going to tell them it was poor quality food. So you definitely want to advise the patient to continue their healthy eating. Um, say they're a cookie monster, maybe they can start to put in like healthy treats, but you definitely want to have the conversation is, you know, tonight's not the night to go on a drinking binge. Tonight's not the night to have a huge pizza and then some fast food. Um, you can present them with a certificate of completion. So they're like, yeah, I finished my prep phase or I finished my body phase. And you can have them take a picture with their certificate and use it for Facebook or your newsletter or some office promo, because that's interesting. Um, I love to take the before picture with the after picture and compare them. And also the before numbers and the after numbers, you can make a little chart so they can see what their detox did. Patients sometimes are very willing to do a Facebook live videos or they're willing to do a Facebook post. So that could be handled if the patient's um, going to be on that video or if their name is going to be in print, then you need them to sign off that that's okay for, for that to be used on Facebook. Um, maybe they're ready for their next detox. So perhaps the patient started with prep phase and now they're ready to go to body phase or they did body phase and now they're ready to go to brain phase. How do you know? You can take the detox box and place it on the patient and, and test. And if they need it, they'll test strong. Um, or maybe that patient just verbalizes. They just tell you, hey, I, I love this. This was awesome. I finished prep phase. Now I want to do brain phase. Or I finished body phase and now I want to do brain phase, whatever the case may be. Or you set a new target. So, you know, we're in the month of March, maybe in June, we'll, we'll do that. So those are my troubleshooting detoxification tips. Um, I did recently a brain phase with a 47-year-old female. Her chief complaints were uh, brain fog. She just couldn't think. She had problems with recall. She had short-term memory, long-term memory loss. She was depressed. She just felt awful. She did brain phase and loved brain phase. She loved the ease of the packets. She loved... Um, coming in weekly and having me help her with her food. She didn't have any problems, uh, any of those troubleshooting problems that we were talking about. She didn't have constipation or any of those things. She did super good. And at the end of brain phase, she reported better energy, better thinking, better mood, and just she just was a very happy patient. I hope that these tips help you with your patients with detoxification. And I look forward to seeing you at the next systemic event.